It's convenient for girls to be angry about nothing. Girls who are angry about something are dangerous. It is time for another installment of Fresh Reads Friday. For those of you that have just stumbled upon my channel, Fresh Reads Friday is where I review books that I have read recently. And today we are going to be talking about The Bird King by G. Willow Wilson. I received an e-arc of this through NetGalley for my honest review. Thank you so much to Grove Press for approving that request. This is an adult historical fantasy that was really, it was just like this lovely little touch of magical realism in historical fantasy and I just love that where everything is very similar to how it would have been in the day except for that one little touch of something that's different. The Bird King is set in 1491 in Granada it is during the rule of the last Sultanate of the Iberian Peninsula. We open the novel with Granada under siege and we are seeing through the eyes of Fatima who is a concubine to the Sultan. The book primarily focuses on Fatima and a young map maker named Hassan who has a little bit of a magical ability to his map. If he draws it, it comes into being. He can see things that he has never seen before. He's been very useful to the Sultan in these last few years of the war. When the Spanish delegation comes into Granada to talk about peace and surrender, Hassan falls under the scrutiny of one of the members of the Inquisition who has seen what he can do and kind of is like, well, that's, that's sorcery. Fatima finds out about this and because Hassan is her best friend and basically her only friend, she goes to warn them and they kind of escape in the middle of the night through one of the little, like, Hassan creates a way out of the city with them and they accidentally wake up some sleeping evil while they're doing that and so they spend the rest of the novel both running away from the Inquisition and this sleeping evil, just trying to find somewhere safe for them to live where Fatima will be free and where Hassan will no longer have to worry about people torturing him. I am going to say that uh, it's, it's stated right off the bat that she is the Sultan's concubine. If you are squicky about vague consent issues, just know that it is talked about. We don't have to go through any any scenes, but it is talked about her relationship with the Sultan and her relate because she's been his concubine since she was 15. So if that any of that squicks you out, you might want to skip this book. I thought that this was a fascinating novel to read. I was drawn into the action from the very beginning. I really enjoyed it. I gave it three stars. It was not my favorite novel, and anyone who has been on my channel for a while will know that that's probably because the romance was not my favorite thing, and there really was no romance plot line in this, and for me, I need I need that. I felt like the description was just a tiny bit misleading because from the description it looked like there was going to be more romance than there was and I was like oh oh this could be in and it wasn't there so I was a little bit disappointed by that. It still was a really good book. It still was a very vivid experience. Let's talk about the characters. I loved Fatima and Hassan. Fatima is so vicious internally like just some of her thought processes and what she would have loved to do to these people who had kept her enslaved because she was basically born her mother was a slave and so she was born into slavery and she was very pretty and so she became the king's concubine or the sultan's concubine and um, she's not quite happy with where she is in life. She's, she's realized that she is not free, that she doesn't get to say no to basically anything, although she, she is a little bit ornery. I liked how, how vicious she was and how when things, when things needed doing, she was able to do them and she was very brave. I'm the one that's here, so I'm going to do this. She's also very kind and I did like that because she just loves Hassan with her whole heart. I thought that was fantastic. I loved how much they loved each other. It's not romantic love, they're, it's very much platonic love. The exact like wordings are never used, but I would say that she is bisexual and Hassan is definitely gay. And so like there's no attraction between the two of them, but their friendship is just, it, it is something that's pretty and gorgeous and beautiful. And the only like sticking point for me after I got over the fact that, oh, obviously this isn't going to be a romance between the two of them, is the fact that they bring up the fact that a romance between the two of them would be very convenient. And they bring it up multiple times. And so that frustrated me just a little bit because like why, why, if it wasn't going to happen, why did we need to bring it up at all? Except maybe, maybe if someone else had and they're like, oh no, no, that, but just the way that they brought it up, it was weird to me. I really like how her, her kindness ends up affecting the plot. I don't want to get into any of the other characters because they're spoiler, that's spoiler territory, but I really did like a lot of the side characters that we had coming in and out. There's a whole bunch that we get to meet at the very end that are just like, they were phenomenal and I liked how, how each of them was a, their own character and they had their own quirks and like you could see them as a full person even though we were only getting little bits of them. She did a fantastic job of just like creating and like fleshing out her characters even like I mean like you hate the antagonist so or I did I hated the antagonist so so much like I just mmm oh 
I would have loved to see them just burn. I also really liked the emphasis that this has on found family, not necessarily like blood family, but people that you find and you kind of make a home with those people because we see a lot of that in this novel and it, it was adorable and it was wonderful. The plot was a little, a, a little like, it wasn't weird, like it had a good strong plot. Like the beginning was solid, the middle was pretty solid. It really picked up during the middle. The beginning was a bit slow, but I'm used to that in fantasy and kind of magical realism. And then the ending was a little weird and muddled and undefined. I found myself losing like placing and what was going on a lot with the ending and I'm, I'm still not entirely sure like it doesn't there are things that happened at the ending that just don't quite sit well with me let's see if I can talk about the central theme without spoiling it but I really liked how the central theme was about Fatima finding the power that she had within herself I love those kinds of storylines when it's about the main character finding the power that like realizing that they already have the power they need in themselves that they are already who they need to be that they are already who they are looking for I really liked that part of the plot and the fact that that was kind of the theme I felt that was really well executed. I feel that that made the end, like it reached his execution a little bit like it reached his end point a little bit too soon in my opinion. Some of the ending is she, it's like she didn't even have the realizations that she had three quarters of the way in. So that was a little weird. I also really liked how she introduced Hassan's powers and how they were set up and had then how they fed into the rest of the plot. I loved how she worked that into the plot and uh, the impact that it had on the plot. As for the world building, I thought that her world building was wonderful. Like it was beautiful and descriptive, but it wasn't overwrought. Like there was never a part where I was like, well, they're going on just a little bit too long about this. She kept it relevant. She kept it present. She kept it driving the action forward, which is how I really love my description. Like have it be part of the action, have it be giving us something about the characters and something about what's going on. I really liked the take that she had on Jin because it's not the typical like I guess Americanized version of what you would think of Jin if you're if you look like me um, where like it's a genie in the bottle like they are they're they're much more than that and there are so many different kinds of them that you run into across the course of this novel who don't necessarily look like you would expect and not a single one of them looks like you would expect them to look uh, and I think that's part of their just their nature and I think that's part of their the actual lore. One of the other really interesting things that I really liked about her world building was how she brought religion into it and wrapped religion into it. The characters are Muslim. I am a Christian but I still really appreciated how she talked about religion and how she talked about how religion is supposed to work in our lives and how it's supposed to transform us. I thought that was wonderful coming from someone who has a faith background that's different than mine to be able to see that connection between the two of us. I know that wasn't necessarily her goal in it but I really resonated with it and I really appreciated it. I also loved how she juxtaposed that kind of living breathing idea of religion with the kind of blind bullheaded of the Spanish Inquisition. One of the characters has a very like very rude awakening because they realize what the Spanish Inquisition is. Um, that's I felt that with my entire soul and being. It's a very dark blot on Christianity. And then one of my favorite things about this novel was how you start out in the known world. You start out in Granada, you start out in the palace of the Sultan and then you are increasingly brought to stranger and sh like it, it just increasingly gets stranger. So we start with just a teeny bit of magic that we see through Hassan and then that magic is built upon and more magic is added on top of that and so you are kind of gradually introduced into this magic that permeates the entire, entire being of this story. I thought that was so well crafted. I, I loved it. Oh, that was probably my one of my favorite things about the novel. All in all, I thought this was a really good book. I really enjoyed reading it. If you are someone who likes found family stories, you will like this. If you are someone who likes stories that focus on platonic relationships, you're going to really like this. If you are someone who likes just historical settings that are just lush with description and bring you into the world and the atmosphere and makes you like, like I could feel, I mean, it might be just because it's, I live in Florida and it's just hot and humid in general, but I could feel, the, I could feel the the weather that was going on around them. I could feel it. Also, if you are someone who likes novels where romance is like 
barely in the periphery of your vision, you're also gonna like this novel. I think you will probably ap uh, appreciate and enjoy this novel a whole lot more than I did. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, hit that subscribe button. I make videos two to three times a week about books and writing, and I would love to see your lovely face here on a regular basis. If you want more of me, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter. Those are both at the word nerd with a three in nerd instead of E. That is it for now, my friends. Happy reading, and I will see you later when we will talk about more wordy, nerdy things. Bye!